Today's video, we're going over DroneLick, a drone automation app. So after my tutorial with the Mini 2 on how to map using MapPilot Pro, I said there was an alternative app, DroneLink. I wanted to try this out and see if it's any better than MapPilot Pro and to compare the two. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of its features, the app interface, running some missions and then my final thoughts. So let's take a look at some of its features. Now, first of all, this isn't a free app and there are two plans available, a professional and a hobbyist plan. For the professional plan, there are three tiers, a starter, growth and enterprise. And for the hobbyist, there are three tiers again, a basic, premium and elite. Now I purchased the premium hobbyist plan for this video in order to show you guys and how this app works. It works with both iOS and Android and there are some integrations such as Pix4D Cloud to upload your photos to create maps, Skywatch for insurance and air data for your flight data logs. Obviously, when you look at their comparison chart, you can see what each price plan offers in terms of features and automations. Now, the first thing I like about DroneLink when I purchased it is that you're able to use the browser to plan your missions as well as the app. This is something that you couldn't do with MapPilot Pro. It actually has a lot more features than MapPilot Pro, which is purely for mapping. So DroneLink has waypoints, orbits, following mode, and with the premium version I purchased, mapping. Now let's go over the app interface. I'm using DroneLink on the iPad Air 4 running iOS 16. Now on the left hand side, you'll see here all your mission plans and your repositories. Repositories are just another word for folders. You also have a search bar here right at the top where you can search for your mission. If you notice at the bottom of this, you have a home icon, Thunderbolt icon and history icon. The home icon is where all your mission plans are. The Thunderbolt icon is running missions on the fly. This is essentially as the same as DJI Quick Shots. And then the history icon is missions that you've already run and then you can rerun them as well. If we go back to the home icon, by simply tapping on a mission, launches the app interface for when you have your drone activated. Obviously the drone is not active right now. To edit a mission, simply press on the three dots and then click edit. And this will take you into the editing interface. And as you can see, this is one I have pre-planned earlier, which I will go over in just a bit on how to create a mission. On the top left hand side where drone link is labeled, if you click the hamburger menu, it essentially gives you a mission planner, learn, connect, and you can check for upgrades. And you can also set your system measurements. So Imperial and metric. Your theme is whether you want light, dark, or system. And then the dashboard is your dashboard of your drone. This is the modern theme menu and I'll quickly show you the classic version, what that looks like. So as you can see, there's slight differences here on the classic menu. And at the bottom uh, right, you have the create function. So if you tap that, this then brings you to your create menus. And you can see here where you can create missions, maps, orbits, panoramic captures. You can even edit examples that others have done. And at the bottom, you can see all the options available if you upgrade to a higher tier plan. Now let's take a look at DroneLick's drone dashboard. Ignore the black screen for now. The camera is just not on for the drone and we're not connected. This is something that you will see when I'm out in the field in just a moment. The Thunderbolt icon on the left hand side of of your dashboard, if you click on that, that gives you your on the fly options. And this is something that is customizable and you can change on the top left, your drone and whether it's disconnected or connected. This is where you can customize the Thunderbolt icon. So right now we've got it set to on to fly, but you can change it to go back to home. Now I won't go over every single option, but I do wanna demonstrate how to create a basic waypoint and mapping mission, as there are a lot of additional extra features in order to customize these and it can be overwhelming. And then this video would be really long. However, if there is something you would like to see or know, put it into the comment section down below. Now, first, let's just start with a basic waypoint mission. So I'm just gonna click here, create, and then I'm gonna click onto waypoints. And now it's asking me to select a takeoff location. So what we're looking at here is a new complex build that they're building in the village. So I'm just gonna tap on the bridge that's located here, and that should give us a generic waypoint mission. Obviously, we wanna set these parameters. So first of all, if we look at the two menus at the top here, we can change the name. So we'll just keep it as new waypoint plan and we'll put it as two for now. If there's any takeoff restrictions, what our action on return to home is, our max speed. And if we click advanced, 
you can have a dynamic home point, but this is an upgrade option. So we're just gonna hit done for now. What we wanna do is we want to adjust the waypoints, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. So if we look on the right-hand side, there is a lock icon. If we just tap that, and now we can maneuver point A, point B, and then point C down the road here, avoiding to fly over the houses. And we want our point of interest to be in the middle. So I'm just gonna move the point of interest icon here, where it says A, and then this other purple dot here, is our path of action. What we want to do is set points A, B, and C to be a specific altitude. So I'm just gonna change A to 200, to B to 225, and C to 250, and then just click done. So you can see now points A, B, and C, our altitudes are set. We wanna tell it what we want it to do. So on our path of action, we want it says here already automatic capture video, which is fine. That's what we want for this path of action. And we're just gonna click done. And what we can do here is just above, you have some icons. So on the 3D icon, if we tap that, this will generate a preview of what our drone is going to do. And then we can use our fingers to obviously move and about. Two fingers, we can actually move up and down and even twist the map. And if we scroll all the way around, we can see that the drone is increasing in altitudes from points A to C in a curved path. Eye icon that will vanish that and we go back to our main screen. If we click the clock icon, that actually give us a mission estimate. So how long is this going to take? A maximum speed, distance, altitude, how many photos are we taking if we're doing photos and how many videos are we taking? And we can just dismiss this. And next to that, I would call it a terminal symbol. But if we tap that, essentially what this does is create a preview virtual mission of what the drone's going to do. So if I click the play button, and then we'll just fast forward this eight times, this is literally simulating what the drone would do in the field. So it will go to its start point, and then it will just make its way around capturing video. And if we scroll down here, we can actually see a timeline with the various actions happening at the various points in time. So for instance, how high the drone is going to be, over the time of this mission. And by using two fingers, we can actually increase and decrease the timeline, which is fantastic. And we can even just use our finger on the timeline to maneuver the drone at specific points in time. And by clicking the X icon will take us back to our main mission. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show you a waypoint mission that I created earlier. I'm going to show you what it's going to do. So it's essentially the same. We have two waypoint missions created here. So the first one is essentially a video path as we did before. And I added a second one, but at that second one, it's basically taking a photo at point A, B and C at point of interest A. So once it gets to point A, it will take a photo, point B, it will take a photo and point C taking photo. So we, if we can make missions more complex by adding certain functionality to them. And we're gonna be testing this out in the field later. So I'm just going to create a mapping mission here as well to show you how this works. So now it's just set a takeoff location. So I'm setting the same point again. So it creates a generic map. Again, you have the same variables where you can name your plan, any takeoff restrictions, your action returns home. If you have a dynamic home point, which is a premium feature. So I'm just gonna click done. Now we want to position the map over this new complex. So again, we tap the unlock icon. Now we can maneuver the points over the complex to capture this area here. That is it. So if we tap on the left-hand side where it says map, we wanna set our altitude. So I'm just gonna set this to 200 feet. If we click advanced, we can then set our overlap and side overlap. So I'm just gonna set this to 80. Our capture mode, our max speed, our flight direction, our pattern. So whether we want to do normal or grid, grid is a premium or upgrade feature. So we're just gonna keep it normal for now. And we're gonna click done. And then what we want to do is our just our di direction of our flight plan. And we can do that by clicking this compass icon and just literally move it around the circle for it to go lengthways. And you can see our start point as well is in green and we can maneuver that as well along the line and we can move that around here. And that is how easy it is to add a mapping mission on drone link. And again, you have the same functionality where you can see a 3D preview of what the drone is going to be doing, a mission estimate by clicking the clock, and you even have a virtual preview over a timeline where you can see what the drone is going to capture over the period of time. And now we can go into the field and then run some tests and test out some of these features and to see how Drone Link app works. Okay, out in the field, 
We are first running the mapping mission. This is the Thunderbolt. We go to home, money map mission. Let's, oh, it's finding our location. Let's go all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna hit play in the top right and that should run our mapping mission. Three, two, one, starting mission. So I've got power lines there, so we just wanna keep an eye on that. I'm gonna expand this for now. We're gonna be clear of that because we're going to be at 200 feet and the drone is making its way to start its mapping mission. So while the drone is mapping the complex behind me, let's have a look at the drone's dashboard here. So the bottom right, you can see here the camera and then we can open this up by clicking the double arrow icon. And this is the drone's view of what it's currently taking. And we can flip that back by tapping the arrow again. So if we click on the Moni new map plan, it actually gives us a time of here how long left is going to be run for the mission. The map overlay, the altitude height, its speed and its orientation. On the top right hand side, you can see obviously the drone's battery, how long left in total for that battery, number of satellites, your RC signal. And by tapping that gives you more options here. So for your drone, camera, gimbal, and then some settings for the actual app and then if we just tap on the screen that will hide the menu you can have a photo icon or you can select your photo mode bottom right here is your iso and your camera options okay that is complete mapping mission was straightforward i feel like map pilot pro had better on-screen information for your mapping information and let's run our waypoint mission i'm going to run this test mission that i created earlier test number two so there you go, it gives me our waypoints list there, which is interesting. If I open this and switch this, oh, there you go. That's kind of nice. So it's going to its first location. So this is going to take about just under two and a half minutes to complete. So what I want to know is that how smooth can this video be compared to flying manually? So far, so good. Obviously, don't worry about the framing because this is simply a test. <music> cancel the return to home so i want to run another mission money orbit plan and just hit the play button and it should be able to run there we go so instead of having to land i'm just jumping straight to the mission you could set these up to execute one after the other but i wanted to try these out separately for now when i was planning these missions i wasn't aware of this big uh, telephone pole here but it didn't come up within the 3d planner this is why it's important to check your surroundings first before you execute missions and then what I want to do is a follow me. So follow me. Okay. How does this work? Oh, uh, it says GPS. Maybe I'd have to use my phone. But I'm connected to the internet, which is bizarre. I have to switch the camera off because it's it says it needs a device with the GPS to be able to do this. So I'm going to switch everything around and I have to pause the camera. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, starting mode. Is it, what's it doing? Three, two, one, starting mode. all over the place three two one starting mode oh what's it grabbing it's just glitchy as hell all right i'm gonna cancel this i don't like this whatsoever okay that follow me mode was not impressive whatsoever i don't like the fact that it doesn't work with the ipad and it just wasn't great at all 
let's head back for my final thoughts. So here are my final thoughts with DroneLink. It's a very detailed app and you need to spend some time to explore its full capability. And this is something I will try to use in the future to show you guys. There is no free trial for users to try out. However, they have said that if you're not happy with the app, you can get a refund. I do think the prices are reasonable for the hobbyist and the professional plan. As for the results with DroneLink, the mapping was straightforward and the waypoints were straightforward and obviously there are some more advanced features you can use with it. I do however wish where when you're creating a mapping mission you'd be able to select the file type for the drone like with MapPilot Pro whether it's JPEG or DNG. There was no option for this so the drone just took both file types so that was fine but it'd be nice just to capture one file format. As for functions such as follow me mode it didn't work very well so I wasn't exactly impressed with that. Hopefully drone link get to see this for them to hopefully fix this issue. You should be able to just tap the object that you want to follow whether it's a person or a car and it should be able to follow it. The current menu system having to go through all that didn't like that whatsoever. So what would you use drone link for? Now for filming and photo purposes yes it's far easier just to fly your drone to the location and point of interest and frame it yourself without wasting time having to plan the mission. However, in the professional world, this is where DroneLink's app comes in handy. Such as construction project monitoring, you need to be able to take photos and videos at the same height, the same location every single time. To be able to create this mission and set your parameters beforehand and going at each stage of the project and just running that same mission, this is where DroneLink's will come in handy where you don't have to fly the drone manually and trying to guess where you took the photo last. Is it better than MapPilot Pro? The interface is better and it's more logical and there are some advanced functionality and more automation options. MapPilot Pro is purely for mapping. The app can be overwhelming but with regular use, like with any app, you can master it. Checking out some of the public missions can help you see how others have used the automations available to learn from. DroneLink doesn't offer a stitching service, it's purely an app. You would have to create your maps with an alternative provider like Maps Made Easy which is the cheapest option. Is it worth it? The basic plan I feel isn't that expensive for you to purchase. If you're going to be mapping it's $50 as a hobbyist but then again you can't do commercial missions with it but for $20 a month you can and that's definitely worth it and helps keep costs down until you upgrade to something more complete like drone deploy. Mapping is something also literally doesn't have as part of its feature set. However, it does have tracking and waypoint. However, after testing follow me out in the field, that didn't work so well. So maybe you might want to stick to Litchi until DroneLink can fix this. So if I was going to purchase DroneLink, I would purchase it under the professional plan and use it specifically for mapping purposes. And that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed this, please remember to give it a like as it does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.